morning, afternoon, or evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Apex Autos. Today with me, I have a 2016 BMW X1, and we're gonna be doing an express session today because I don't have much time left with the vehicle. So this 2016 BMW X1 that I have is the M Sport variant. Comes with the optional M Sport rims, LED headlights and daytime running lamps, M Sport grille, lower fascia, side sills, wheels you can see there which are wrapped in 225-45-19s, run flats, definitely creates uh, quite a bit of road noise and a little harsher ride. The BMW X1 was redesigned for the 2016 model here, going to a transverse mounted engine, so front wheel drive bias, two liter turbocharged engine, putting out around 220 horsepower and 250-ish pound-feet of torque. It is all wheel drive with a front wheel drive bias. I haven't been able to push it hard enough to, or been in wet enough conditions to be able to notice. Looking at the interior here, you can see it's got the M steering wheel, which really comes in all M variants across the line. M door sill plaque. I like the carbon fiber silver with the blue trim that goes along the interior here. Also the stitching, the blue stitching along the seats looks really nice and you got the M colors there on the seat. Stitching continues along the leather here on the door. Overall everything's soft touch from waist up. Bottom doors, harder plastic, but this is an X1 so can't expect anything too fancy. This vehicle starts at around a 35,000 I believe and uh, with options can go up to around 50. I know some of the options in here include panoramic sunroof which uh, this one that I rented um, the owner told me that it actually the sunroof is not working because the windshield was replaced and they broke a switch so um, and then this one also has the optional heads up display which is pretty nice. You can see it, music changing, um, directions, turn by turn navigation, that being. And then we also got the optional Harman Kardon sound system, 12 speakers, 360 watts. Sounds pretty good overall. Um, bass is pretty punchy. Doesn't hit some of the low lows as uh, for the base source, it is two eight and a half inch ish speakers that are underneath the front two seats. Um, and unlike some of the other Harman Kardon sound systems that are in BMWs, this one doesn't really have uh, as much adjustment. The other ones you can adjust individual um, hertz responses or ranges. This one just allows you to control the bass and treble and also doesn't have the L7 um, surround uh, algorithm in it, so. But still sounds pretty good. You can kind of see uh, the speakers there, so there's one on each side underneath uh, the front two seats. And then got speakers in the doors there, beautiful. Silver domes. And then you got the center channel, which is two speakers there. Uh, mid and a high range in that and then each of the rear doors have two additional and then another thing that it has for the M Sport here is uh, adjustable speed seats with the lumbar support and then it's got these little cubbies um, underneath both the front seats which are pretty nice actually it's a little more additional storage there. Um, inside the center council here, there's not much room here. Um, 
the armrest up top, yeah, it's it's pretty shallow. Uh, I actually took out, there is like a iPod phone connector that sits in here. I took that out because you couldn't fit anything with that besides literally a phone. And then a little more storage under there. Nothing too deep. And then this, when you drop it all the way down, you can kind of lift it up uh, to adjust the height. And then to bring it back down, you lift it all the way up and then drop it down. And then, yeah, you can kind of click it up a few notches to get the desired height. A little bit more additional storage up here with a 12 volt. Um, then you got your cup holders. I like the placement of the cup holders because when they if cars put them back here Then uh, when you're resting your arm um, Sometimes it like sits on top of the drinks, which can be annoying especially if someone gets a big gulp Nice soft touch stitched leather here with the, the blue stitching And then got the iDrive controller down here um this one does have uh, the touch pad. I don't particularly like it because when you are trying to adjust things with either the controller or sliding back and forth, um, it's like when you when you push in to confirm what you want, sometimes uh, when you're pushing in, your finger will accidentally um, s slide it a little further than you'd like. So that's uh, not a feature I particularly like. Um, yeah, like that. And uh, yeah, even when you, you can turn off some of the features with the touchpad, but it doesn't let you fully turn off. And then uh, for the X1, they went back to a mechanical shift lever compared to some of the other BMWs, which have the electronic ones. Some people prefer the old mechanical lever. Um, I'm kind of indifferent. I, I think the electric one actually is kind of cool, but. And then, of course, as BMW is known for, um, the different switches, they, uh, they click and go back. Um, some people like when they stay up or down to uh, let them know that it is in that position. Um, owning a uh, 3 Series, I'm used to it, so. And uh, this one does have auto wipers, as well as auto headlamps, or auto high beams instead um and then you got your paddle shifters here which are nice uh when you're in driving in the mountains so you can downshift um and then this one also does have the uh, driver assistance plus package where it does have adaptive cruise control um lane departure warning but not lane keep assist uh so it vibrates the steering wheel if you start to veer over the line without putting on a blinker um as far as the adaptive cruise I don't particularly like this system the best. Um, it works fine for the most part, but when the sun is rising or setting and you're driving towards it, it will actually disable uh, the adaptive cruise and, or just the cruise in general. There's no option to just have normal cruise control. It's either adaptive cruise or nothing, which is a little frustrating because when I took this on uh, my road trip over the weekend, uh, putting 1200 miles on it, there were times when I was driving uh, directly west when the sun was setting and it kept disabling the adaptive cruise control. So I had to sit and modulate my foot on the, the gas pedal. And, and that was uh, a little uh, annoying to be honest. It'd be nice if you could uh, just you know, have a normal cruise control with that, if, uh, if that's the case. So um, definitely not a fan of that. And then in the center here, um, you really have kind of like uh, your standard BMW controls that you would find uh, for climbing infotainment. Um, I've always loved this with the BMW. So these presets here, you can set for not only, to just uh, they're touch sensitive to, to uh, preview what each, uh, each one's uh, set as, but you can set it not only as radio stations, but you can set it um, as different settings, you can put like GPS um, destinations in there. So for example, in my three series, for number one, I have it set to my home address. Um, for this one, I have set for work, for example, 
this number seven I have for uh, um, stop or cancel guidance and then a few in the middle I have for radio presets so uh, that's definitely a feature that I um, personally really enjoy and I find cool this one does also have the optional I think it's an 8.8 .8 inch display um, so definitely a overall good resolution um, and then as you can see here uh, Camera's overall pretty good resolution. Uh, um, turn that off. There's a license plate mounted on the the front um, passenger side, so it uh, messes with the sensors a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's overall good resolution, uh, good function. So does have tilting and telescoping steering wheel. LED map lighting throughout and it is laid out right now, but uh, around and underneath trim on the side um, In the middle here and then all the other doors around the trim It allows you to either switch from like a cool bluish color or uh, the traditional BMW orange um, Which looks nice at night and then it's also in the foot wells as well. So I am currently sitting behind where I would have the driver's seat positioned. Um, I'm 5'9", and as you can see, I got plenty of leg room still. Uh, someone six foot or taller definitely could fit back here. And uh, panoramic sunroof, or the shade's closed, because um, like I said, it's uh, broken right now. But uh, definitely get a gorgeous view, uh, overhead view from back here. Um, definitely a really nice option, the panoramic sunroof. It basically goes uh, like the length of the vehicle for the most part, or a good majority of it. Um, so the back, the back seat here, it, uh, it does have some climate vents. Um, it's just a uh, dual zone climate. You don't get a tri-zone um, here for adjustability in the back, which uh, is a little unfortunate, or heated seats, anything like that. But um, back seat, it's pretty spacious and uh, overall comfortable. You could definitely do a road trip back here. Um, got some cup holders here in the middle. Uh, yeah, I, I would say it's more of a four person vehicle uh, for longer trips. For a short trip, you could squeeze someone here in the middle, but definitely not ideal. And then moving on to the trunk here, it is electronic lift gate. And then as you can see this lifted up, uh, you do have a cover to kind of hide your belongings that you put back here, which is also removable if you have bigger items that you need to put in there. Um, but uh, actually quite a bit of room for something in this class. You do have a 12 volt plug-in back here as well as some additional storage, uh, cubby storage for things you don't want necessarily rolling around. And then, oh, I'm actually surprised. I did not know it had a spare tire with the run flats. Um, but yeah, so there's a little additional storage underneath there. And um, obviously as you saw, a spare tire. This does have the electric folding seats or mill seats. So yeah, if you remove this, you got quite a bit of cargo storage here. So overall, the last four days driving around this X1, I've enjoyed. Um, if I was looking for a subcompact uh, crossover, I would uh, I would definitely consider it. Um, it's a very practical car overall for its size. It's got a lot of cargo room. I love the heads-up display. Um, 
being able to scroll through my music, see turn by turn directions, have the speed limit um, as well as your current speed projected uh, on the heads up display. All uh, very useful, good information. Um, seats are overall pretty comfortable and adjustable. Uh, um, the lumbar support, uh, lateral support, um, the, the thigh, um, it's got thigh adjustment which is nice. Um, it's pretty direct steering. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I like it. Um, the adaptive cruise is nice when it works. Uh, it's just unfortunate that uh, sometimes when you are driving towards um, sunrise or sunset, depending obviously which direction you're going on, time of day, it doesn't work, which is unfortunate. And the fact that you can't just set a normal non-adaptive cruise uh, is really a bummer. Um, the lane departure warning is uh, definitely a nice feature. Would of course be nice to have um, lane keep assist. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't have that, unfortunately. Um, and blind spot monitors would be nice as well. Uh, they definitely were around um, when this vehicle came out and uh, was redesigned. So that's kind of a bummer that they didn't put that in. I'm used to looking over my shoulder anyways because my vehicle's 2013 and does not have it. But uh, definitely a, a nice... Um, feature to have is kind of like a double double redundancy. Um, even when I do have it though, as a double redundancy, I do look over my shoulder anyways because I, I'm just, it's a habit. Um, I like the panoramic sunroof, uh, really nice. Well, it would be nice, I guess, if it was working. Um, unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, it's not. Uh, driving around in this though, um, it's a pretty quiet ride. And then as far as power, putting your foot down, you're not going to get a crazy amount of torque. It's got a little bit of torque, uh, enough for most people looking to get this vehicle, um, but nothing crazy right home about. One thing, um, yeah, there is a little bit of tur turbo lag for sure, uh, especially off the line, um, more so off the line. Um, and one thing that I don't particularly like is uh, it's not as bad at higher speeds, but when you're at low speeds, it doesn't seem to want to downshift into the lowest gear possible, unless you put it in manual mode. Um, for example, I was just at about 15 miles an hour, and I, and I floored the accelerator, and uh, it only downshifted to second. So it's a little slow getting up to speeds when at 50 miles an hour it can easily downshift into first gear. His first gear will take it all the way up to 30 some miles an hour. So um, yeah, that's it. the downshifting I definitely have to criticize a little bit. Um, even in, you put it in sport, like if, I, if it was in eco mode, I would understand. But when you're putting it in sport mode, um, that should definitely uh, adjust the algorithm a little bit as far as um, throttle response down and downshifting and it doesn't really seem to do that um, for some reason so I know this isn't a, a sports car sports sedan but BMW in its nature is supposed to be a little bit more of a, a sporty type car and uh, yeah, I wish I wish it uh, did that a little better um, besides that though as far as sporty characteristics it's uh, the, the steering kind of like I mentioned it's pretty direct um, actually and it rides pretty flat i can't speak on behalf of all x1s but this um m sport variant when i was driving around um some wines bends it, it was doing a pretty good job pushing it six seven tenths i didn't push it all the way um 10 out of 10 anything like that to see if i would get some understeer or uh, body roll anything like that but uh just going around this bend here, kind of pushing it a little bit, um, a little harder. Yeah, you get a little bit of lean, but uh, nothing crazy. Um, I would say it overall feels pretty sporty um, for this uh, subcompact crossover. As far as uh, if you were to tow things, it doesn't come with a towing hitch. Um, 
looks like you could mount one. It, it is a unibody, um, as you would kind of expect. But uh, I believe the towing capacity, if you were to mount um, a hitch receiver, is 30 some hundred pounds. So you could haul a small trailer or light fishing boat or put it um, like a bike rack on the back or something like that. So for most people that's adequate. Um, you're, you're not going to be getting this to haul around big machinery for landscaping or anything like that. But uh, for road tripping, um, going camping, stuff like that, it's, it's pretty pretty adequate for that. So yeah, with that, um, I'm going to conclude this and uh, say, so yeah, if you're in the market for a subcompact and uh, something a little bit uh, more flashy or classy, um, this is definitely one to consider.